Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine, and this week we're going to try to get you out so you can catch your last fish of 2021 and maybe your first fish of 2022. Also, stick around for details on a giveaway I'm putting together. Uh, stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So we'll start things off in Massachusetts, as always, and we're starting to see some hard water fishing now. You've got to travel inland. You've got to head, you know, an hour north or maybe two hours north, or you're going to head west. But um, there is some ice fishing going on. I talked to James Jukes, and he said that he and his buddy Clayton went out. And uh, they headed into New Hampshire, I believe, uh, found some decent brown trout, found some perch. Uh, he said the shiners were working really well. Also, pink tungsten jigs were getting it done. He said the pink was really outfishing anything else. Uh, but as you head south, you know, the ice just dissipates. You're going to find some skim ice here and there, but nothing, nothing walkable. Uh, and then, you know, so as we move into, you know, the approaches to Cape Cod, Plymouth, and then the, the Cape proper, uh, it's still an open water thing, and trout still dominates you know what most people are doing right now so you're seeing good numbers of brown trout rainbow trout uh, some tiger trout mixed in um, places like long pond and little pond in plymouth uh, peter's pond and sandwich uh, hamblin the nickerson state park ponds um, mashpee wakeby all these spots are putting out decent numbers of trout it definitely has been a migration toward the like bait and weight uh, deal lately, you know, just kind of casting your whatever out there, night crawler shiner, <clears throat> power bait, and you know, waiting for the rod tip to jiggle, and that's catching, that's producing good numbers of fish. But there's still guys are getting them on flies, you're getting them on jerk baits. In fact, a guy uh, throwing a jerk bait around when I was talking to Ian from Goose Hummock said a friend of his was throwing a jerk bait for smallies and ended up getting a five pound brown trout. Uh, and that's the other thing, you know, there's been some decent smallmouth fishing in several of these ponds, Mashpee, Wakeby probably being the, the most prolific producer on the Cape. Um, guys are getting them from shore and boat, and, um, you know, it's a good time to get them on jigs, it's a good time to get them on blade baits, um, even net rigs, things like that. Um, and when I was talking to uh, the crew at Red Top, they said that they had a few guys that were doing well on largemouth as well, which doesn't really surprise me. This is one of my favorite times of year to go throw jerk baits for largies, um, but it's you know it's not everybody's favorite time of year to fish for largemouth. So that's good to hear that um, you know there's three viable freshwater fisheries taking place right now in Massachusetts. On the saltwater side, not hearing a lot. Not a lot of uh, not a lot of guys heading out for cod or pollock or anything like that. Um, am hearing about some holdover fish in the estuaries of Cape Cod. In fact, Ian uh, said that he had a half dozen stripers this week, uh, with the biggest one by far being a 34-incher. Um, so, you know, it just kind of goes to show that it's worth it to poke around in some of these estuaries. You just don't know what you might find. I definitely want to bring those small paddle tail plastics with, uh, you know, jig heads from a quarter ounce up to a half ounce, and just stay close to the bottom and just stay mobile until you find fish. And that's pretty much the story that I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. As we move over into Rhode Island, the saltwater bottom fishing is still really good. It's, it's amazing how well it's held up this year. Um, so between the 7Bs and the Francis Fleet and booked off charters, uh, these guys are all you know, coming back with good reports. They're, they're getting some tog. They're getting lots of sea bass. They're getting some codfish. They're even getting some porgies out there. So. Um, I think the main thing is, is just the how robust the sea bass bite is right now. It's definitely going to outlast the season, which ends on New Year's Eve. Um, so if you want to get in on it, you're going to have to you're going to have to move and shake now because you've only got a few days left to get out there. Uh, but I was talking to Tony uh, from Booked Off Charters, and he said in some places fishing between 100 and 150 feet of water. He said, and he said in some places those sea bass were stacked 25 feet deep off the bottom. Uh, cod fishing seems to be getting incrementally better. It's just, you know, a click a day. It seems like just a little bit better. Tony said they're getting about a dozen fish per trip. Um, there's also some cod inshore, though. I was talking to Mike from Watch Hill Outfitters, and a friend of his has been heading out of one of the breachways in a little 17-foot tin boat out there. He's, you know, floating around in a soda can out there. And uh, 
doing doing really well in some of these inshore reefs on keeper cod, market size cod. Uh, he did well enough that Mike was saying he's going to head out there with him tomorrow. So, um, you know, if you if you got the boat in the water, if you got something trailerable, we've had really nice calm days for a while now. Um, might be worth heading out there with some jigs and some clams. You, you don't know what you might pull up. On the freshwater side of things in Rhode Island, the trout fishing again seemed to be very good this week. You know, uh, you're going to want to go on the DEM website and look at the fall stocking list. But places like Stafford Pond, places like the Melville Ponds, uh, the Wood River, and some you know any one of the uh, ponds that was stocked during the fall is they seem to be producing well. Good sizes and numbers of brown trout with a with a smattering of rainbow trout also. Um, but it really looks like the bite has been good. In fact, I'm going to have to get out there and give it a try this week because uh, it just looks like it's been so productive. And that's pretty much the story that I have for you guys in Rhode Island this week. As we move over into Connecticut, one of the most remarkable things is that there are still striped bass on the beaches of the Sound. It seems to be focused mostly between the Thames River and the Connecticut River. Um, and I mean, these fish are almost all schoolies, uh, but there have been occasional slot fish in there. There's also bass moving up the rivers now. There's holdover fish in the Thames. There's holdover fish in several of the tributaries on the Connecticut River. And then, of course, the crown jewel of the winter striper world, the Housatonic River, is having a good year. Um, seeing good numbers of fish, good sizes of fish. And, um, but it's far from a guarantee. In fact, I was there last night, and it was a real struggle to put a fish on the rocks. Uh, but they are, it, it is, it's a, it seems like it's an above average year um, with above average sizes. So definitely worth a shot um, if you're looking to put that first striper of 2022, notch that off the list real quick. Um, that would definitely be where I would head. Um, on the freshwater side of things, there's been good catches of salmon in the Naugatuck and the Chetucket River. Uh, both of them got another dose of salmon last week, and uh, by all, all indications point to the bite being very good. Um, then you have the whole trout thing, where the Farmington River is leading the way, but the Salmon River is producing really any one of the TMAs. Uh, it's a viable option throughout the winter. And so far this year, with the warmer water and not so much rain and snow, seems like the bite has been pretty steady and been pretty decent. Um, not hearing a lot of freshwater bass fishing. I know that it's got to be good uh, just because we're seeing the res you know good results in the other states. Uh, still no ice to speak of. So like the, the coves of the Connecticut River, they just once in a while they got skim ice. Guys are making do though. They're going out and fishing from shore from boats with uh, Golden Shiners under a float, they're getting some really nice pike. And I've been saying this for years. I don't know why more of these guys that are so, you know, uh, excited about ice fishing when we have these years where we don't get ice when you, when they wish that we did. Why don't you head out there in the kayak, head out there in the boat, or go find a place on shore and throw a big shiner under a float. And these guys are proving, you know, week in and week out that you can get some really beautiful pike um, using those same methods. Uh, some of these coves are also holding good numbers of panfish. It seems like that panfish bite has come down a little bit, but um, by and large, the Connecticut River freshwater fishing is phenomenal. Um, and there's other fisheries that I haven't mentioned that are also phenomenal. It's just, just an amazing fishery, definitely worth checking out, and definitely a place you can go to scratch the itch in the wintertime. And um, yeah, that's the story that I have for you guys in Connecticut this week. The last thing I want to talk about before we kind of bid our farewells here is I'm going to do a giveaway and I'm doing it on my own blood, sweat, and tears. So if you've been reading this magazine for a while, you know I like to build plugs. Um, I've built a few over the years or come up with a few designs, I should say, that have you know little cult followings. And one of them is a, is a needlefish that I call the flat glide. Um, I have some bodies that I'm going to paint, so I figured why not? I want to try to get some photos out of you guys. So between now, whenever you watch this video, and uh, we'll say January 10th, um, if you, whatever fish it is, I don't care if it's a Housatonic striper or a smelt from the camps up in Maine, anything in between, from ice to kayak, fly rod, doesn't matter to me. Uh, just want to see evidence that you guys are out there fishing in the wintertime. 
Um, send those in. I'm going to pick the top three. I'm going to give them a needlefish each. I'll, I will contact you directly and ask you what color you want. I'm hoping to scratch together some other stuff I can give away to some other tackle prizes. Maybe I can give away ten. Um, you know, but I also got to see the participation. So send those um, images to me at danderson at thefisherman dot com. Uh, try to make them nice photos, and um, and I'll pick the best ones and send out some prizes. And then last couple things, you know, one, you don't have to watch this video if you'd rather just listen to me blabber. You can look me up on. Uh, on iTunes or wherever else you find podcasts, search for The Fisherman Magazine. You should be able to tap and click your way in from there. If you're not a subscriber to the magazine, I highly suggest heading over to the website. Covering the whole northeast coast, from Delaware all the way up to Maine. Freshwater, saltwater, offshore, it's all covered. Uh, reports to cover that entire area as well. So head over to the website and check that out. And if that still doesn't interest you, at least give us a like and a subscribe here on YouTube. And hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification when we post something new. Uh, looks like we're welcoming in a new year. Happy New Year, everybody. And, uh, you know, it seemed like 2021 was better than 2020. So let's hope 2022 is even better than that. Good luck this week. Happy New Year again. And thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Steigercraft boats, built by people who fish our waters. Serious English choose Steigercraft for their 40 years of boat building experience right here in the Northeast and Mid-Atlantic. Visit Steigercraft.com for a dealer near you.